The National Institute of Mental Health states, one in five, 51.5 million U.S. adults have been diagnosed and treated for mental health disorders with no current data for the undiagnosed or untreated. Join me, Nikita Nicole, the Illuminist, a Bay Area native and former beauty professional, as I discuss and demystify mental health. This raw and refreshing podcast will not only help you identify mental health disorders and difficulties, origins, triggers, and potential causes, it also provides regimens that can be implemented in everyday life for healing, balance, and optimal living. Your mental health is the new wealth. Before we get into this episode, let me say that I am not a licensed mental health professional nor a doctor, although I will host licensed professionals as guests from time to time. The mental health difficulties discussed on this podcast will come from extensive research, life experiences of myself and others, and are not to be taken as diagnosis, prescription, or cure to any health mental difficulties or disorders. If you are experiencing deep mental health difficulties of any kind and have lasted for any duration of time, please contact your local mental health professional for assistance with treatment. If you or someone you know is suffering with mental distress or thoughts of suicide, you are not alone. Please call the toll-free National Suicide Prevention Hotline, open 24-7 at 1-800-273-8255. Again, that is 1-800-273-8255. Now let's get into the episode. Hello, hello. You are tuned in to the Mental Health, the New Wealth podcast. I am your host, Nikita Nicole, the Illuminist, and I am so glad that you decided to tune in today. This podcast episode is near and dear to my heart, not it only being my first podcast of this series. However, the topic that we're going to go over today was mind-blowing. As I was getting this podcast together, I discovered something that not only I go through, but I know you go through on a regular basis. I was able to discover the triggers as to why we do it, what makes us do it, and then also more importantly, remedies and rituals that we all can do on a regular basis to achieve better balance. The topic that we're going to discuss today is procrastination. So sit back, relax, and let's get into this episode. Webster's Dictionary defines procrastination as to put off intentionally or habitually. The etymology of procrastination is a Latin word, pro meaning forward, castinos meaning belonging to tomorrow. The full meaning of the etymology is putting off till the morning. Procrastination is something that we all experience and it's something that is a part of all of our lives. However, some of us experience procrastination more than others. And so on this podcast, our goal is to shed light on different mental difficulties, how they arose and how they show up in our everyday lives, and then discover different rituals and things that we can do to remain in a healthy balance when it comes to our mental health and these difficulties. So when you look at procrastination, there are so many reasons that we procrastinate as a people. Um, there are so many reasons as a collective as why procrastination has become so affluent in our everyday lives. Majority of that reason is due to fear and dread. So you must ask yourself, why do you fear doing a certain thing? Why do you dread doing it? Is it because you're tired? Is it because you don't have organization? Is it because you don't know where to start? Is it because you have a fear of failure that you don't feel like you will be successful? Are you trying to be a perfectionist so you cannot move forward, which is one of the things that I suffer with? What is the reasoning for why it is you procrastinate in the ways that you do? 
Once you are able to delve deep and look at these reasons for procrastination, you can then address those reasonings and figure out a way to rearrange those things that you do on a regular basis so that you can err on the side of balance when dealing with procrastination. So let's go into and delve into the different facets of procrastination and how they show up in our lives. So one of the levels of procrastination is the avoider. This person procrastinates in the way of ignoring tasks until they get out of hand, um, wanting to do other things instead. They also create a level of crisis for themselves because they wait until the last minute telling themselves that they do better under pressure. And I can really resonate with this level of procrastination because even through high school, even as a child up until adulthood, I have told myself that I operate better under strenuous pressure when in fact I did not. Um, I was ill-prepared. I was not able to do my best because I was not fully equipped with what I needed to do because I was in frenzy mode because I waited until the last minute. This often showed up in my life when I had strenuous deadlines and I really just dreaded doing them for a lack of energy, lack of know-how, just a lot of different reasons. But because of this, you know, it created a crisis. And so for protection for myself, I developed the attitude, well, this is the best that I can do. Take it or leave it. I had so many other things to do that this is what I was able to do so far as this project. And a lot of times that was not the case. A lot of times I waited to the last minute due to whatever level of procrastination I was suffering from, which did not provide the best outcome for me. Another one of the levels of procrastination is being busy. This person does a lot of unimportant tasks, making themselves feel productive, but at the end of the day, they're not doing the important things that they need to do. And so you see this in so many different facets when spirit or universe puts something on your heart to do, gives you an idea, gives you something that will help yourself in the collective and for whatever reason, you don't bring it to life. You write it down. You do everything you need to do other than bringing that thing to life. However, the funny thing is, so far as the adage of there's never anything new under the sun, does not mean that the frequency of that idea or thought was not given to someone else to do. So just as you receive that thought, someone else received that same thought. And what happens is because you are busy being busy, but not executing the thing that spirit has put on your heart to do, you live your life and then you see that someone else is doing the exact same thing that spirit gave you to do. So then you go into remorse, you go into depression, you go into sadness, you go into different lower level vibrations, worthlessness, because you didn't execute something that you know could have been done or should have been done. And you have to look at that being brought to life through the eyes of someone else when you had the idea to do it yourself. So I too have also that you guys can resonate with that as well. The important part is to look at these different levels of procrastination and see where you can see yourself so that you can work on balance to bring you out of the pattern of procrastination. Another level of procrastination is the strategist or the planner. This person takes so much time planning, getting everything together, plans to the T. The strategist does so much planning and so much forethought about the thing that they want to bring to life to where they never execute the actual plan. So they spend so much time getting everything together, researching, uh, doing the work that they kind of, in a way, talk themselves out of or remove themselves from actually starting the project because they're so busy planning and figuring out how they're going to actually execute the project. Another level of procrastination is the delegator. Delegators usually are found in the workplace, usually are found in hierarchy situations. A delegator gives their task to someone else. And a lot of people in high positions like this level of procrastination because they don't want to be forced with blame. 
A lot of procrastination comes, like I said before, with fear, fear of not looking and doing your best, fear of being judged, fear of what people might say. So if you're a delegator, you can give this responsibility to someone else. And then if the ball is dropped, then you have them to look at why it was not done effectively. This last level of procrastination is something that I discovered in the research in procrastination that I suffer from. I can't say that one of these levels is better or worse than another, but I can say that this level of procrastination seems to be the worst because it embodies a lot of these different levels of procrastination in one, which is the perfectionist level of procrastination, also known as the socio-perfectionist procrastination. This is the thought level that you are always expected to do your best, that others are looking at you, expecting you to do your best, and you might not always be up to that. I believe that I developed this over time. Being raised by a single mother, I was always expected to do my best. And so because of this, this developed into wanting to people please, wanting to always do my best. I excelled in many different ways, being an entrepreneur at a very young age, owning businesses at a very young age. I developed perfectionism, procrastination. If it wasn't perfect, if it wasn't aligned, if everything wasn't in order, if I didn't have a plan for exactly how I was going to execute, if I didn't have all the ducks in a row, then I would not push forward and move forward in the things that I knew that I wanted to do or needed to do. And you may see this also in, in your life or in other people's life, whether they're in college and they always feel like they have to do their best. Um, they always feel like even if they're getting a 3.0 or 3.5 average, that that's not good enough. They need to get straight A's or you see that in type A personalities that they always just have to be stellar. They just always have to shine. And so they're very private about their mistakes. They're very private about the things that they do that are not the best because they always want to be seen in the best light. And so this only feeds that level of procrastination. And whichever level of procrastination that you resonate with, it is important to know that you are not alone. We all deal with procrastination on a regular everyday basis, but the issue comes in, the difficulty comes in when we allow this procrastination to ruin our lives, when we allow these levels of procrastination to hinder our productivity, hinder us from moving forward. Once we are not able to move forward and be productive in our lives, it causes anxiety, which causes a level of worthlessness because we feel stagnant. We feel like we are not moving. We feel like we are not moving forward. And most importantly, we feel like we're not living in our purpose. And when you continue to feel like that day after day, it only elevates and then spirals into depression. When you see yourself spiraling, when you see yourself going down this rabbit hole, to make sure that you elevate yourself into a level of balance. And therein lies the key. You won't always be able to elevate yourself to the greatest heights, but if you can remove yourself from the lower level vibrations and bring yourself to a higher level of balance, then you are able to move forward into the healthier levels. And that's all that we ask of you today. So touching on some elements of procrastination and how they show up in our lives, I'm sure that a lot of you guys resonated with a lot of these different levels of procrastination. And believe me, there are more. But I must say that the frequency and the energy of procrastination is a lower level vibration. It's a lower level frequency. So let's look at the different things that we can do to bring our levels higher to bring our practices higher so that we can get out of the clutches of procrastination thing in our lives. So knowing and understanding that a lot of procrastination is rooted in fear, what are the things that you're fearful of? Take a deep breath with me. Let's think of the ways in which we show up fearful in our lives and why we are fearful. 
Do you feel like you won't do your best? Do you feel like others will have negative things to say about you? Do you feel that you have failed before so you will continue to fail again? Are you constantly told by your self-talk and other people is in your life that you are worth nothing, that you will not succeed? Have you looked at your family lineage and seen that there has been no progression in your family so you feel that you will not be able to do anything different than what they have done? Do you feel like that you don't have time to implement? Are you fearful of being busy putting in the work? Why are you fearful? What is it that's causing this procrastination in your life? Only you will be able to decide and determine and how they're showing up in your life. But I must say that i rather go through working through procrastination than going through the pain of not living up to what that I need to be doing living through the remorse and the regret of not moving on things and watching other people push through and push forward in ways that I know that I should and I can. So when delving into fear and the different things that cause procrastination, let's talk about the different things that we can do to restructure ourselves. It's very important to look at the things that we do on a regular basis, which is our routine, our ritual. What are the things that we do naturally that causes certain patterns and certain activities in our day? So it's important to have positive patterns and positive activities so that we can break the levels of procrastination that we face on a daily basis. So when dealing with these things, we must first start with self. And I am giving you permission today to give yourself more self-love and more self-compassion. Quit beating yourself up. If you made mistakes in the past, look at the lessons that you were able to learn from these different mistakes. Take those losses as lessons and move forward. Don't make yourself insane. We know the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over expecting different results. You must be authentic and real with yourself and know that just because it's comfortable does not mean that it works. So if it no longer works and it's no longer resonating with you, it is okay to release. It is okay to let go. It is okay to love yourself unconditionally. The good things about yourself, the bad things, the things that make you uncomfortable, the things that you don't like, it's okay to love those things because only when you love those things and you show compassion for yourself, are you able to move out of those things. Only when you are not judgmental of yourself and others, are you able to move out of procrastinating because when you're not judgmental of yourself, you're not having thoughts like, oh, I should have been did that. Or why did they do that in that way? Oh, I could have done better doing that. But the fact of the matter is, sis, the fact of the matter is, bro, that you didn't do it. So you can't pass judgment on another. You can't look at someone's situation and say anything negative or have any lower level vibrational thought about what someone else did or did not do. When you do things like that, you're only projecting how you feel about yourself. So to first be self-accepting, to first be compassionate with self, you need to not be judgmental of yourself and you need to just accept and love yourself fully. And you can't love me properly if I'm not showing the proper love to myself, if I'm not being self-accepting, if I'm not forgiving myself. It is of balance. It is of polarity. We have choices. We had options and choices before this year of six. But now that we are here, the options and the polarity is strong. We have structure. We have structure and foundation so that we can make choices for ourselves today that will make our lives the best that it can be. So focus on living and being in the present. But you must first make the changes in your rituals today little by little so that it can become habitual. It can become something that you do on a regular everyday basis. Another thing that you can do to help yourself with procrastination is affirmations. 
Affirmations are very powerful, not just with procrastination, but in every facet of our lives. And it should be done all throughout the day. Affirmations is something that you say to yourself, affirming what it is that you want to see in your life. You are speaking things as if they're already there, as if they already are. Well, that looks like when you are a procrastinator, I am thoughtful. I am orderly. I do things effectively, efficiently, and in a timely fashion. I am conscious of my time and others. I am loving and caring and respectful and compassionate to myself and others. Those are just examples. So you would actually structure your affirmations where it helps you the most. If you write these affirmations down on sticky notes, preferably on a mirror. So when you say the affirmation out loud, you are looking into yourself as you state these affirmations. As you continually state these affirmations, they evolve into what you actually are on a daily basis. These affirmations become who you are. These affirmations start to cultivate and create and form the energy around you in which you live. Take time out on a daily basis, at least 15 minutes to meditate. Meditating is something that I found very hard to do because as a procrastinator, I wasn't able to actually take the time out to still and quiet my mind. Meditating is not something that you're going to get right off when you are meditating. It's going to take quite some time to meditate effectively. But I promise you, once you are able to sit still, it will change your life. And I've heard a lot of people say that prayer is actually speaking to spirit, speaking to the universe, putting your requests, putting your orders in. Meditation is the universe and spirit speaking to you within your inner man, within those inner quiet parts of yourself. So meditation is something that I do on a regular basis and I found it being very effective in how I operate in my everyday life. I can tell the trajectory of my day when I don't meditate and when I don't do my affirmations. Make sure before you start your day, before your heat feet hit the ground, before you get out of bed, that you make sure that you're putting some sort of intention on your day. I will have a great day. I will have a productive day. And you can do this while you're doing your affirmations. But this is something that you speak over your day. If you know you have a big meeting, if you know that there's tasks and things you need to get done and you tend to procrastinate because you're overwhelmed, because you are facing fear, you can intend your day that I will be accurate. I will be poignant. I will be on top of everything that I need to do today and I will show up as my authentic self and do my best. When you intent your day, it's a total game changer. Um, I really never knew that I was just going out in the day unprotected. I was letting life happen to me and me not being able to experience life because I was not putting intentions on my day. So because I was not doing these things, it made it very hard for me to be able to move forward in a day-to-day living and do my best. Another thing that's going to help you with your procrastination in every facet of your life is making sure that you treat your body properly. This is not something that can be looked over. This is something that you must do in order to use all the other hacks that I just gave you. If you're not getting ample rest, if you're not treating yourself properly, if you're not delving into self-care on a daily basis, you will not be able to execute these things effectively. You will not be able to change your trajectory and develop high frequency habits, high frequency rituals that will then carry you on to being your best self on a regular basis. So you must set a bedtime for yourself. Now, this is something hard for me because I'm a night owl. 
<laughs> I was born <laughs> at 11.07 p.m. I was ready to go, okay? I'm a night owl. I feel that I work my best at night. I get all my downloads at night, but I needed to give myself a bedtime. So because I do like staying up late and it is important that I wake up at a reasonable enough time to make sure I do my morning rituals, I need to wake up at a certain time. So because of that, I need to lay to rest at a certain hour. So for me, I gave myself 12 a.m. Everybody is different. That might be too late for some people and that might be too early for some people. I learned that for my cycle and my body and who I am as a person, I need at least six hours of sleep. And so you'll discover what you need for yourself by going to sleep without an alarm, right? So just say, for instance, you have some time and you can get some rest. So make sure you rest up really, really good, right? To where you're not exhausted, you're you're fully rested, right? After that, what you're gonna do is you're going to go to sleep without an alarm. And you're gonna track how long you go to sleep without insomnia, just a regular sleep schedule, how long you stay asleep and when you pop up. So I noticed that even if I'm tired, all I really need is a good six hours of sleep. If I oversleep, if I sleep more than six hours, there's something going on. Whether I am deprived, whether I'm overwhelmed, whether I'm depressed, and that is something that we definitely will talk about in another one of these episodes because that is so important that it deserves an episode all by itself. But If I sleep past six hours, it's something going on. So that's something that I discovered. But we can't operate on sleep deprivation. We can't operate in insomnia because we're going around with not a fully charged battery. Some people can only sleep four hours and they're fine. If you can do that, then that's great. But you have to figure out what works best for you. Also, I recommend that you delve into the book Eat right for your blood type. You can find it on so many platforms. You can find an online version. I particularly like to have books in my hand so that I can reference, I can highlight, I can look at later. But eat right for your blood type lets you know how your body functions based on the blood type that you have. A lot of us get stuck and caught into the different trends, whether it is veganism, vegetarianism. Um, I don't like labels, but currently, just to give you an ideal of how I eat, um, I honor a pescatarian diet. So it's a vegetarian. However, I do eat seafood. That particular diet for me at this pattern or this time in my life, this season in my life works best for me right? And I'm a B blood type. So that works for me because B blood types need to be balanced, right? So I feel really sluggish. I feel uh, not my best self when I'm eating a lot of meat. Maybe you are our blood type that needs meat, needs a lot of protein. So when you read this book, it'll help you to understand what you need to do and how you need to eat on a regular basis to be your best self. Because if you're not eating properly, if you're not getting enough rest, then any of these things that I'm talking to you about right now, you won't be able to utilize them because they won't be the best for you to operate. Something that's really important when dealing with procrastination and making sure that you stay on the higher vibrational energies is making sure that you pat yourself on the back for a job well done. A lot of times dealing with procrastination, we're always trying to move on to the next best thing, right? We always want self-gratification if it's not coming fast enough or if it doesn't seem to work out in the way that we want it to work out. We're trying to move on to the next thing uh, because we don't want to, we want it to look grand, right? We want it to look very big, but celebrate the small wins. And I had that really bad and I'm sure that this resonates with a lot of you. You're You're not celebrating your small wins. You're not looking into or you're not looking at the things that you accomplish that are small. If you wake up at the time that you said that you weren't gonna wake up 
If you work out, if you do the things that you're going to do on a regular basis, celebrate those small wins, whether it's just acknowledging that you do them, whether it's whatever those things are, but celebrate those small wins so that you don't overlook those things. So you're not always looking to the next best thing, the next thing. Celebrate today so that you can accomplish more tomorrow because you're not operating out of lack or out of non-productivity. Also, this is something that I struggle with because You know, it's hard to figure out and figure out in my day what that looks like for me is exercise. You must exercise. And the reason why I say must is because exercise is a way for you to elevate your spirit, elevate your heart rate, get your body agile to expel negative stress, energy and depression. Right. So if you're something that someone that experiences high levels of anxiety which is one of the main causes of procrastination, then you need to exercise to get the jitters out. You need to exercise to make sure that you're letting the excess energy out so that you can then focus the core energy on what needs to be tackled and what needs to be done for the day. You're not able to move forward because you have all this pent up energy that you are using to be worried, that you are using in anxiety, that you are using to think about ways and reasons why things won't work, why things will go wrong, reasons why you will be unsuccessful, judging yourself and others for not doing their best. But if you work out, you won't have time for those things. And I'm telling you this by experience. When you at least walk at least 30 minutes a day, or at least get some fresh air, or at least get out in nature. When you at least do these things on a regular basis, it helps you to get out old stagnant energy so that you can become more grounded and aligned to move forward. It's making sure that you have things around you to remind you of your progress, remind you of who you are pushing forward to be, and to help you recalibrate the energy that you already have. So if you are experiencing negativity, if you are having issues with self-love, compassion, self-discipline, if you are not healing from past mistakes, if you are not turning your losses into lessons and you need help with that, something that I found that was very helpful for me to do is use the natural elements of the earth, air, fire, earth, and water. And so what that looks like in my everyday living is taking the uplifting aroma of what it is that I want to achieve. That looks like carrying gemstones, having bracelets, necklaces, and adornments of gemstones to make sure that I'm helping to calibrate the energy. That looks like grounding, going outside without shoes and walking in grass or just standing on the actual ground barefoot so that when I get anxious, when I get into a spiral of unworthiness, when I get into those places, I can detach from being so high and come back to the ground level and understand that I am created in the image of the most high. And if spirit and divine is opulent, if spirit and divine is all knowing and spirit and and divine is everything and anything that I can ever want, then I am everything and anything that I can ever want. Because the same elements of the earth flow through me, I can create the life that I want to create. So some of the gemstones that I have experienced and I know work for anxiety, depression, self-discipline, self-love, compassion, healing are smoky quartz, sodalite, rose quartz, obsidian, flower agate, citrine, Lapidolite, aquamarine, opal, and ocean jasper. 
you may have to Google your metaphysical store in your area and go in and tap in. Let it be something that resonates with you. If you find one that doesn't quite resonate with you, there are so many. But get some of these gemstones that you can have in your environment around you. Only when you are able to gain balance are you able to move forward in your best light. So I encourage you. I am shining light on you. I hope that this podcast episode and procrastination has been helpful, that it has given you clarity. It has given you understanding and helped you figure out where you lie on the levels of procrastination and what you are able to do to move forward as your best self. And make sure that you do the affirmations that you need to do to make sure that you correct your subconscious and your self-talk so that you can move forward in your life due to the fact that procrastination is not genetic and is not hereditary. You can do so many things in your everyday life to change the trajectory of you being a procrastinator. We are thoughtful and we are moving forward in timely strategic planning. Once again, I am Nikita Nicole, the Illuminist. Thank you so much for 